Hey everybody, this is Pastor Jim. I hope you're having a great day. Hey, today I'm excited to talk to you a little bit about the United Methodist Church as well as Manchester UMC. Uh, tell you a little bit about the background, a little bit about our history and our beliefs, and then hopefully you'll have a great conversation in your group. Uh, I have some slides, so I'm going to kind of bring those up here so you can see those. First, I want to tell you about the founder of the Methodist Church, and this was a guy named John Wesley. He was born in 1703 in England, and uh, he grew up and decided to become an uh, Anglican priest or the Church of England, and he was ordained as a priest, and he was doing lots of good, preaching to lots of people, and at age 35, he had this experience where he finally discovered that the things he was telling people about how much God loves them and God wants to um, be gracious unto them and um, everything he was telling them, he realized it applied to himself as well. And so he had this experience that says his heart was strangely warmed. And from there, he started to form these groups or these kind of clubs, if you will. And uh, they were called Methodist Societies. And they were groups of people that kind of met and they had certain practices. In fact, they used to get made fun of and how we got our name as Methodists is because they were so methodical. Like we meet at this time, we pray at this time, we read our Bible at this time. And so uh, it kind of became a derogatory name at first and then eventually it changed over to, to being kind of the positive name that we have today. So we have these methodical practices that in our life we kind of believe we just keep doing and that helps us to better understand God and God's plan for our lives. And as, as followers of Methodism, our, our Wesleyan, John Wesley, Wesleyan emphasis are kind of fourfold. We believe that we're saved by God's grace, which is just a way of saying that, you know, there's nothing that we can do to, to earn God's love. God gives it to us, and there's nothing that we've done or anything we can do to make God love us any more or any less. God just loves us completely as we are. Um, but we do believe that we have free will to choose whether we accept that love, whether we want to follow Jesus, whether we want to live a life that uh, is pleasing to God or not. God doesn't shove it down our throats. We also believe as Methodists that we don't just you know, think and feel our faith, but we put it into action. We go out and actually kind of walk the, walk the talk. And, uh, and so we do that through mission and service by helping other people, helping those in need, uh, standing up for those who are being harmed or oppressed. And, uh, and then finally, that our faith isn't just a, a solitary thing. We don't just believe we have a relationship with God, but we do that in community with each other. And there's lots of ways we can do that through worship or groups or classes. So those are just some of the things that United Methodists believe. One of the important things that it's good to know, I think, is that when United Methodists try to decide what is the Bible saying to us, we look at it through a variety of different lenses. We're trying to figure out what God is wanting us to do in our lives. And so I want to share this little graphic with you, and I'm going to bring it up here so it's a little bit bigger. And it's called uh, quadrilateral is a fancy name for it. But you notice it's just a series of circles. And think of these as just different lenses that we look at things through. So the biggest lens in the back there, kind of the golden or yellow, is scripture. That's kind of the main thing that we look. What is God telling us through the Bible? What should we learn about God, who God is, what God wants for us, how God wants us to live? But we don't believe that's the only thing we use. We better understand scripture by thinking about, well, let's use our reason. Let's use our head. You know, God gave us these great brains. God doesn't want us to just check them at the door of the church. But rather to think about, well, is what we're reading, is that consistent with what we know about God and you know, what we, what we can think and what other people can think and how does that work? We also have our own experiences. You know, we've lived in this world and we will continue to live in this world. And so we've, those experiences have taught us things. So what have we learned about ourselves, about other people, uh, about God, and how can we apply that to better understand God's will for us? And then tradition, that's just recognizing there's a tradition of the church, that the church has been around for thousands of years and the people who have come before us have asked many of these same questions. And so they might have some good things for us to be thinking about and, and some practices to follow. There's lots of different stakeholders in the Methodist tradition. Um, all of these work together. You know, you see the picture of the hands here, right? There's no single person or no single group that makes up the United Methodist Church by themselves. Rather, it is a group of stakeholders who each have their different roles and their different responsibilities to make the church what it is today. First among those is laypersons, and that's just a fancy way of saying anybody who's not a pastor or not clergy. 
And this is the majority of the people in the United Methodist Church. This would be folks like you, and it would be folks like our, perhaps your parents, or um, everybody who comes to sit in the pews. Um, and they're super important because it's really who we're trying to reach as a church, is both the, the lay persons who are in the pews and the lay persons who have not yet come to a church. Next, we have lay leaders. These are lay people who have stepped up to volunteer uh, in different roles, different leaderships. They might lead a team, a small group like you're in right now, or they, they might lead a whole ministry, or they might serve on a board or committee. Then next, we have clergy and pastors, and uh, that's folks like me and Pastor Andy and Pastor Winter and Pastor Phil uh, who have gone to seminary and who have uh, gone through lots of different steps to become pastors. And then the pastors are all supervised, sort of our boss is what's called a district superintendent. And that's a person who is also a pastor, but they kind of uh, supervise and watch over other pastors and support them. Uh, and then there's a cabinet, which all the district superintendents in a particular geographic area kind of get together and they work with the bishop, who's kind of uh, the one who um, provides spiritual leadership and guidance to, uh, in our case, the whole state of Missouri. Um, and uh, each of these kind of six stakeholders partner with God through the Holy Spirit to, to move forward the Methodist Church. There's a few different ways to become clergy or for different paths, if you will. There's an elder, which is like Pastor Andy. Uh, there's a deacon, which is uh, Pastor Winter. Uh, I'm on the path to become an a ordained elder. And then there's also something called the licensed local pastor. Um, some of the differences are just the different focuses within the church that each of these roles have and kind of the responsibilities that they have. You also notice from these pictures that uh, how they wear their stoles is a little bit different. So an elder has kind of two stoles that hang straight down, whereas a deacon, uh, as you'll see in this picture, their stole hangs kind of crosswise. Within the United Methodist Church, there's just like school and everything else, there's kind of paperwork and there's documents that guide how we do things. Of course, the first and foremost of those is the Bible. That's super important. But then we also have a few other things like the Book of Discipline, which talks about our beliefs and our structures. It's kind of our rule book, if you will. Yes, even pastors and churches have rule books. Uh, we have social principles, and those are just how the United Methodist Church feels about certain topics today, whether that be the environment or other social topics. We have a book of worship, which is just all the different kinds of uh, services that we have from marriages to funerals to baptisms. Um, and then we have our hymnal, which is in uh, each of the sanctuary in the chapel. It's the red book and it has, of course, hymns and music, but it also has creeds that talk about what we believe and as well as liturgy, which is kind of just the order of worship. So these kind of guide our path. The United Methodist Church is divided into geographic areas, just kind of like the United States. Um, while the United Methodist Church is global, it's in Africa and Europe and other places within the United States. Uh, we're divided into jurisdictions, which is just a collection of kind of different geographic areas. And then those are divided even smaller units called conferences or annual conferences. Our annual conference here is Missouri. It happens to have the same boundary as our state. And then those conferences are divided into districts. And on the right here, you'll see different uh, colors making up the state of Missouri. Each of those colors is a district that's led by a district superintendent who supervises the pastors in all of those churches in those different counties. So it's kind of just like the United States and it just kind of keeps, you know, you've got states and you've got counties and you've got cities uh, and you kind of go down from there. So here's a really important one. What are some of the things that kind of make us special or different uh, as United Methodists? Well, one of those things is we believe in, and recognize two sacraments, Holy Communion and Baptism. And we believe that because we saw Jesus doing both of these. Some churches, some faith traditions have other sacraments like marriage or confirmation. And it doesn't mean one's right or wrong. It just means these are the two that we have seen. Um, Holy Communion is open to everybody. This is super important in the United Methodist Church. You don't have to do something special. Everybody's welcome at the communion table. Our focus on grace and the way God is working in our lives is super important. Our focus on our personal faith and our social faith. We don't believe we just kind of uh, have this faith that we keep to ourselves, but rather it's something we live out in our lives in terms of how we treat other people and how we uh, work to make life better for everybody. 
And then finally, our clergy are appointed by the bishop. Every single year, uh, each clergy person can move to a different, be moved to a different church or they can stay where they are. And so the bishop makes that decision after talking to the church, after talking to the pastor, uh, and uh, after talking to the bishop's cabinet. So those are some of the things that, that uh, uh, describe United Methodism. Let's talk a little bit real quick about Manchester UMC's history. Um, we were founded uh, in the 1800s. And uh, what's interesting is a man by the name of John Ball, who was actually the founder of Balwin, he actually paid for the first uh, place where Methodists gathered in this area. And so he kind of got us started as a congregation. And in fact, if you haven't gone out someday, I encourage you to go to our cemetery because John Ball is actually buried in Manchester UMC Cemetery. Now the current chapel that we have uh, along Woods Mill Road, and you'll see a picture here of it from long ago on the top right, was built in 1856. Now that's a long time ago. It's been remodeled lots of times since then, but it still stands today. There's still worship happening there on Saturday uh, afternoons. We outgrew that, and so then in 1969, we built a new sanctuary that held about 550 people. And if you look at that picture, it might look familiar because it's what we currently call Fellowship Hall. But at that time, it had pews and a pipe organ and all kinds of things. And then finally, in 1998, our current sanctuary opened where we have our large steeple and our round window and uh, just a large space, and it can seat 1,200 people. So um, that's the place where we worship today on Sunday mornings. And finally, Manchester UMC is led by a leadership board, and this board uh, sets kind of the policies for the church. It's made up of 15 different people uh, of all different backgrounds, uh, different genders, different ages, and uh, they typically serve three-year terms. So they, they get uh, nominated and voted on, and then they get uh, put on the board. There are also three clergy, uh, of which I'm one of them, and they have a uh, voice. They can talk about issues, they can speak about topics, but that we don't have a vote. Uh, this board usually meets about monthly, and like I said, their job is to set policies, they set budgets, uh, and then the clergy and the staff and the laity, we partner together to make sure that the policies that the leadership board has come up with get implemented. And, uh, and that we as a church are living into those policies of, of making disciples for Jesus and transforming church and community. So that is a quick overview of the United Methodist Church and Manchester UMC. Uh, I hope you have a great discussion to follow. And as always, if you have any questions about any of the things that I've talked about or didn't get a chance to talk about, Either ask your group leader, ask uh, Beth, or reach out to any of your pastors, including myself. Hey, take care, everybody. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.